Okay, so this is a video game review for Stronghold 2 Deluxe for the PC. Now, there, this game is so big that I may not be able to talk, even even scratch the surface of all the points that I want to make. Uh, so to begin with, uh, let me just say that this game is the third in the Stronghold series, and the second to take place in the medieval period. This review will focus mostly on the differences between Stronghold 1 and Stronghold 2 uh, Deluxe, which is the version I have. So if you want to know more about the aim of the game and... and a better beginner's explanation as to what these games are about, uh, I suggest you watch my review for Stronghold 1. So the question now is, which is better, 1 or 2? Well, I'd say 2 marginally. Now, it improves in some areas over the original game, released roughly 4 years prior, yet it also falls short in other areas. Broadly speaking, the first Stronghold has a better story, has more character, and a better single player campaign, whereas Stronghold 2 has a better skirmish mode with important tweaks and key gameplay areas. So now it's probably best to like look at what's really different about the game. So to begin with, the gameplay is much the same. Build a settlement, create an army, defend your settlement, and in due course, depending on the mission objectives, attack your enemy. There are more economy focused missions and an economic campaign as in the original Stronghold, so you know that hasn't changed. The most obvious difference is the new 3D engine used, uh, which on occasion, you know, sometimes you look at it and it looks beautiful, it looks terrific, and on others it kind of looks a bit bland and lifeless. Depends what mood you're in. Uh, now, the, the the map editor is still there, and it's actually even easier to use and more accessible. Um, because this time you've got like different terrain sort of tiles and things. They've they've actually just laid out even even better than last time. Uh, and the last one wasn't wasn't anything difficult. So I mean uh, that's uh, that's quite nice. Now there's a skirmish mode as well, like a skirmish type kingmaker mode, which is new. Uh, where you can set up a multiplayer offline battle against computer opponents uh, across a fairly cramped map, which by far for me is the most fun mode in the game that they've added, and really that is really where the strength of this game lies. If it wasn't for this mode, this would be uh, a lot worse of a game because the story mode is not so good. The There is also a conquest trail mode, which is basically a line linear set of sieges across historic castles, and there is also the return of the siege and invasion modes, which you can you know, add in your own maps and things. Now the single player military campaign for the most part suffers from awkward, bad voice acting. A dull main character in Matthew, and quite an unbelievable story of pretty cl uh, tired cliches. It's not really a patch on the original, uh, which wasn't exactly a winning, uh, a winning story to a uh, story in the original. I mean, this is no Warcraft 3, let me put it, and that's kind of disappointing in a way. They didn't really have to do much, but you know, they kind of botched it a little bit. The, the sort of how they presented it with like 3D heads talking to you in the corner is quite nice, but other than that, a lot of the voice acting, as I said, and the story elements are, are kind of bad. Now, much of the character has been lost in the new, uh, in the new characters that are there, such as Sir William and, and the King and a few others. And the fact that the the humorous illustrations that I talked about in the first review of the the non-controllable peasants and the animals uh, are missing in Stronghold 2 is kind of sad. I like to click on the chicken and see a picture of a chicken and it says, you know, something like Clucky or whatever. The name's still there, but it's not it's not quite the same thing in this new 3D engine. They've kind of removed some of the, you know, the uh, the sort of, uh, I don't know if you call it humor, but it's just kind of like lightheartedness. Uh, on the plus side, they have a fully rotatable three, 360 degree camera, which if you got a big sprawling settlement, you know how useful that is. And you also have larger keeps and manners, and a new honor system, which would probably take me too long to get into, but it works quite well anyway. Now, your lord is also controllable, which makes him useful in battle. Uh, him or her, there's also a few female, um, I think there's one, no, there's two female uh, lords, or ladies, I should say, in this game. Now, in addition, you also have d uh, double and triple walls in the build menu, which is also welcome, because you don't have to keep on using single walls. You can actually just click on a double wall and uh, make, your, make your castle have a big sort of triple or double wall. And also, the uh, 
let's see. Uh, there's also a gradual zoom, which I talked about in the last one, actually, uh, is in, in this particular one. And although the new 3D engine is probably uh, perhaps not the prettiest to look at at close uh, quarters, um, you know, the the new gradual zoom is welcome. Uh, although, having said that, the combat can look as messy as ever, so you might not want to look at the combat too close up. Now, roughly four years has given them a time to add a lot of new elements to the game. There's a whole host of buildings, which I'm not even going to go into, but just a few of them include vineyards, jousting arenas, vegetable gardens, beehives, bedchambers, and like so many more. Uh, this adds uh, depth to an already very deep game, and the new resources to produce and sell on via the the market which returns so now you have things like candles and you have cloth and, and things like that you will also have to keep your settlement clean uh, rat and crime free as well as these are new factors which can hurt, hurt your popularity while providing things like entertainment in the form of festivals and music bards boosts that popularity so there are a few new factors to consider uh, now the need for a separate treasury building in order to tax people is understandable as are jails and guard posts and stuff to sort of limit crime but this puts a strain on an already tight space that you have uh, however this is somewhat mitigated by the fact that buildings are more efficient these days uh, in this particular game with food and raw materials and gathering buildings and stuff now the numbering system for the units works uh, more reliably this time uh, and although the strong regional accents are more noticeable than ever depending on your point of view that might be welcome or unwelcome Peasant units also are quite a nice touch because it means that you have a new last-ditch defense option in the a absence of any stored weapons. Uh, but there are occasional slowdowns with large troop numbers on the field at one time, and slow loading times are also an issue. The religious system, uh, the religion system, works far better in this game than it did in the previous one, uh, with a steady stream of popularity a result of holding masses not as a result of having uh, a certain amount of people blessed in your population. Now, you need you basically need candles in order to hold these masses, so you need to keep manufacturing those. Also, ladders stay up during sieges. Uh, you know the ladder men that you had before? They used to hold it up and they could get shot down. Well, this time they put the ladders up and then they just kind of you know, wander off. And that's actually a, makes it a lot easier to scale the walls. But uh, given all the, the new developments, that's actually, that balances out pretty well. Because there are larger towers and larger gatehouses and everything's just bigger in this game. Uh, and also little things like dogs returning with food from the hunter's post, uh, rather than the man taking it back every time and then going out, killing a, a rabbit or something and then coming back. You know, now the dog does it. So it, it speeds that up as well. So in conclusion, I, I want to say that it's clear that Firefly really pushed the boat out to improve this original, uh, improve upon the original. The graphics difference will appeal to some, while probably uh, turning off quite a lot of others. Uh, you know, and uh, as for the story, it's pretty poor. It's not. It's not the standard of the original, however, uh, new modes, uh, especially the Kingmaker mode, um, as well as a, a streamlined map editor, and improvements in all the sort of game areas overall, really place this to make this you know, a better game technically. Uh, for the bravery in trying to change what was like a very good system already, I think Stronghold 2 Deluxe really deserves a higher score. Uh, for that, and it is a very decent title, uh, although many fans who probably made the switch would have to take a while of sort of settling in because it is quite a different game. Uh, the look and feel of the game is quite different, um, but that being said, I think it is still a very good game, and I think that anyone pretty much can uh, come to this game, although perhaps uh, it's not as open to newcomers as perhaps the original was because there's a little bit more to this game but still it's uh, the new deeper elements of it the new aspects of the game actually give it a probably better long lasting ability so uh, in the end I'm gonna give this an 8.4 out of 10 and that's me